Wow, this is much harder than I thought. All right, let's do this. Hey guys, my name is Guillaume. I'm a filmmaker and today we are going to talk about gear. Thank you so much for tuning in guys so i've been asking the question on instagram right now like what do you want me to talk about in this video make sure you stay until the end if you want to know the answer one question i get asked a lot on social media is what gear do i use so let's get started my favorite combo of 2018 the sony s7r3 and the G-Master 24 to 72.8 from Sony. This combo is my favorite one so far. I mean, I love the power of the Sony S7R3. I'm using it for video every day for all my jobs, ranging from weddings, real estate, interviews, commercial projects, video clips, anything. The other thing too, this camera is a full frame, which means the sensor is a lot bigger. Let me show you. The low light capability of this camera is absolutely insane. I mean, you can see in the dark and I'm not kidding. Now for weddings, for example, this is very useful because I don't get to install lights and bring lights with me and I have just to run and shoot. It's very convenient to be able to crank up the ISO and not worry about having noisy footage. And I'm using this camera as well to take pictures. I'm using the eye focusing mode a lot if not all the time for my portrait i'm using the 24 to 70 g master it's been a year now i love this lens and i use it on the gimbal on the running mx on the running ass which i'm going to show you a bit later so definitely uh, my go-to kit now let's swap back the cameras as a second camera i'm using my older a6500 and i love this camera i used to shoot pretty much everything on it real estate weddings interviews 4k at up to 30 frames per second or 1080 to 120 frames per second the only difference is it is not a full frame it is an aps camera which means the sensor is a, is a bit smaller which means the low light capacity of this camera is not as good as the Sony S7R3, but I still would choose this camera. If I had to travel and have the lightest kit, this camera is a killer. A lot of you have been asking about my lens for real estate and I use the G Master 16 to 35 2.8. Um, I love the sharpness of this lens. The 2.8 aperture allows me to go into darker environment without using extra lighting, which is a plus for real estate when you don't have the option to add more light. Before I forget, I always use viable ND filters. Uh, I use it for all my lenses, even for my drawings. Speaking of drone, Phantom 4 Pro, this is the drone I've been using for the past two years and I love it. Shoots up to 4K 60, which is a huge plus when you need to shoot that crispy 4K in slow-mo. It's good, it's fast, but it's big. <laughs> so basically, this is the drone. To carry the drone, you need a backpack. I'm using this Manfrotto backpack, which I think is one of the best and where I can put the drone in here. You have the props, you see. The remote goes here. I have two slots for the batteries at the bottom. I can still put my Sony at the top. Now you may have seen I've traveled a bit this year and I didn't bring the Phantom 4 with me because I thought that was too big. I've been using the DJI Mavic Air this summer in France and that was perfect. So such a small drone and still being able to film 4K. Now I was not that happy with the low light and the sharpness of the lens but it's just me being picky. 99% of the time I'll be using a Polar Pro ND filter whether it's just a simple ND to a polarized filter or even a gradient filter for sunrise and sunset. I sold recently my Mavic Air to buy the Mavic Pro 2. Now I can't show you any footage yet of that one because I didn't fly it. It's basically brand new. I still have the stickers on it. So I still need to take it in the air, but um, being able to shoot in 4K 10-bit is going to be 
amazing for color grading so i can't wait to use it this is the mavic when it's totally expanded and this is the phantom 4 pro so in terms of size when it's open like the mavic is actually bigger but when it's spiked let me show you. this is the difference in size so now you understand why i got that drone for traveling and obviously i'll be using some anti filters as well now if you know me strange from you know that emma and i love skydiving surfing freediving wakeboarding and that i can't always bring my camera with me so i always have a couple of those uh, gopro with me this is the gopro 7 i've been using gopro for years now i love these cameras i can't travel without them and if i had to bring only one camera with me this would be the one um, the gopro 7 has impressive image stabilization and when i'm skydiving trust me it's moving a lot and this thing does a great job gopro fusion uh, this is a 360 camera I'm not using it every day, but it's a very fun camera and you can get some really cool angles. Something I love about the camera is that it films even what you can't see. Um, the GoPro Fusion has got two lenses, two SD cards, and uh, can be controlled via your phone as well. I've been using it for nearly a year now. I love it. I'm not using it all the time, but this is a cool camera to have and to play around with. The editing on this camera requires a bit more work. I'm happy to do a tutorial if uh, you guys want to see uh, how I edit my GoPro Fusion footage. The other thing to note is that this camera doesn't work as it is underwater. You will need a proper uh, underwater housing that is not sold by GoPro. I have seen you can find some third party products um, in the shape of a sphere to avoid that distortion that the water creates on the lens. You heard me now. Stabilizers. You guys may have seen I'm using uh, two Ronins at the moment. Uh, first of all, the Ronin MX powered by one or two battery. It's a very powerful gimbal. I usually have my monitor here on the top and I would film um, everything with it. This gimbal is my first big investment I made when I started making uh, videos. Whenever I can, for example, real estate or when I need to run or move quite a lot, this will be my go-to setup. Because of the, the ring grip around, you can pretty much run and carry it in any position, which I can't do with the smaller running ass. So this is still my go-to and this is a gimbal I won't sell because I believe I can use bigger cameras on it. I'm using the Ronin S at the moment. Uh, right now, I've put the Sony A6500 with the Sigma Selimir. I'm usually um, having my screen here, my monitor on the side, plugged in directly to the camera. I'm using the screen right now, that's why I'm looking a bit up. Very powerful gimbal, usually with my Sony A7R 3 and the G Masters uh, lens on it. I can shoot everything. I'm using it mostly for when uh, I need a small minimalistic setup. The battery life on the Ronin S is absolutely insane. I will start some shoot at 7 or 6 in the morning and finish not uh, until midnight. And if I am um, power savvy, I can last all day with only one battery. Now, I need to mention this gimbal is not fully compatible with Sony cameras. And this has been a pain with DJI. Uh, the follow focus wheel at the moment can't control the focus. And this is my biggest disappointment. When it comes to audio, I'm using the Rode Mic Video Pro Plus and I'm using it with a dead cat to prevent any issues with wind and it's a lot better than your internal. This is my go-to mic when I need to film to vlog for example and talk to the camera. Now when I need to record interviews on audio of uh, different nature, I'm using the H4N Pro. That one is powered by two stand batteries double A. Um, it's got its own mics here at the top, stereo recording. It's at the bottom, two XLR inputs if I need to plug in directly into uh, a mixing table. And by having an XLR adapter, I can plug in up to two mics. All the gear shots you've seen so far in that video were shot on my motorized slider. This is a standard slider 
and I've got two units. So this unit is a linear uh, module and this one is a pan and module. All of this is from syrup. I've used only 10% of the capacity of this one. I mean, this is the perfect gear for um, time lapses, for obviously. I mean, since you can control your camera through the app, through those units, this mount, like this assemble very easily. I mean, this is just a rope uh, that goes into a cabestern drive here. I've been filming some interviews, even sometimes putting my runniness on this unit to be able to control a back and forth movement and a 360 uh, movement for the camera. I will make sure to make a dedicated video about um, this, uh, this slider. I've been lucky enough to work with Pelican, uh, Pelican cases and uh, Pelican sent me a few of those and I can't be more happy. This one is the smallest uh, one that you can take as carry-on in the plane and um, has got its own lock. I've got as well the biggest one of this branch which is perfect to carry all my gear when I'm going overseas and I can carry easily my run-ins and my camera and my lenses and I'm not worried about breaking my gear. This small case, uh, I actually carry my underwater housing which I'm going to show you right now. So this year I've been using uh, this Aquatech housing for my Sony A7R III and it has been great. I can use this setup with uh, the G Master 16 to 35 and the 24 to 70 quad. I mean, a lot of the controls uh, can be accessed through those switches at the back and I can even through that wheel zoom in and zoom out. All right, now it's time to answer your questions and my beautiful assistant is going to read them for me. Assistant. Assistant, <laughs> yeah, you're my assistant today. Okay, question one is from Jeremy. What are the most important accessories you'd recommend for beginning in filming? All right, so first of all, I'd like to emphasize on the fact that this is not about the gear. I mean, this is something I need to be very specific about. The gear doesn't matter for this for any kind of video. I mean, you can shoot videos, amazing videos on your iPhone, on the GoPro. But myself started on the GoPro and this is how I got my first few jobs and I have a few friends uh, here in Brisbane or around the world, I mean, they started on the phone and they today, like, they make great videos with uh, whatever gear they have. But now, I mean, the best e piece of equipment you can have is the camera you have here in your pocket. This one is from Jack. What color profile do you shoot in? Both uh, the Sony A7R III and the S6500, I'm using S-Log2. This gives you a very flat image. I'm going to switch to S-Log2. So that's uh, the colors straight out of the camera it's quite flat and back to curls uh, i can show you a few examples from uh, the raw image the advantage of using s stock 2 is you're using a more dynamic range within the camera so next question is from mv sky do you, you use boy. a vertical gopro mount i don't and uh, i've seen a few i mean there is Mark Ruffini created his own vertical uh, portrait mount for the GoPro 7. It's a very good question. I mean, Instagram and the stories right now are all using that portrait mode. And uh, the GoPro Hero 7 has in the software the possibility to take uh, portrait pictures now. Um, I don't have a portrait mount yet, but I'm definitely going to try to build some custom mount uh, to get those uh, portrait shots. How can you afford all right, very good question. You have to know that I didn't start then having a lot of money and I couldn't afford all of, all of these gifts. When I first started um, doing videos professionally two years ago, I started with a very old DSLR. I had four or three years before that and with a very cheap lens. I my first wedding with this camera and a piece of metal that I bought at Bunnings uh, or came out to, to hold my camera. And um, over the years, I mean, I, I've put money aside and every job I got pretty much, I've reinvested into the gear. One thing you have to know is I don't waste money away. I try to reinvest every penny I make into my gear. I mean, I don't go out, I don't party much, I don't drink. So one thing to remember, it's not, I didn't buy everything at once. I mean, it took me years to build my kit. Obviously, you're going to start slow. You're going to first buy your camera, then one lens, then buy one mic and like reinvest a little bit every time. This one is from Cherished Ocean. What would you recommend as an entry level camera for filmmaking? 
Sony S6500 is maybe uh, a camera I would recommend to anyone willing to start. Uh, so this one's from Zach, Sony A7S II or Sony A7R3? Sony A7R3. Sony A7R3 is uh, my answer. Uh, Sony A7S II, I used this camera for a year before, th before that. This is a great camera and I love the full frame. Uh, now, if you don't need the 42 megapixel, you may want to go for the Sony A7 III, which is a bit more affordable and which is still uh, as good, if not better, than the Sony A7 II. This is from Jackson. What are the go-to lenses? So if you're using the S6500, the 30mm 1.4 Sigma Art, uh, is my go-to lens. Otherwise, on the Sony A7, on the full frame, uh, the G Master 24 to 70, because I know I can cover a very wide range um, and getting that very cool cinematic look. At Penguin Media, how do you get such mad skydiving pics? What's the most common GoPro setting when diving? So basically, it depends if you're filming or taking pictures. Uh, if you're taking pictures, I would recommend to use a uh, little trick there. Uh, use night lapse mode, it will allow you to take raw pictures every three seconds. Now, a skydive is very short, and like a picture every three seconds will mean that you will maybe miss your moment. So, you may want to uh, take a time lapse uh, every 0.5 seconds, uh, half seconds, for example, to get a lot of shots and select the picture you want. Um, now, if you're taking videos, I would recommend if you're using uh, the GoPro 7, depending if you have it mounted as a POV, like me, I would uh, have the chin mount. 2.7K, 4x3 at 60 frames per second, which is still using the stabilizer uh, of the GoPro. Uh, now it all depends on what you're shooting. Oh, that's my friend, um, John. Are you pumped for skydiving next week? Yeah, bro, pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the subscribe uh, sub sub <laughs> subscribe button and uh, leave uh, a thumb up if you liked it. Now if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, I'll make sure to answer all those. And let me know as well what you want to see next time and I'll make sure to create that for you. In the meantime, have a great day. See ya. Can I film that video please? Can you let me film? No, no, it's not about you. It's, uh, it's about gear. <laughs> Go in your room. But you can't see me. In your room. You're just hiding behind the light stand. That's not hiding you.